there. Didn't hear you come in. Just finishing up some paperwork in the office. You may have noticed I haven't uploaded a new video in months. That's because last year I decided it was time for a new computer. So I started working as much as possible to save up for it. For the past six months I've been pushing carts and bagging groceries, shooting photos, and even doing some work for Mr. Blender Guru himself, Andrew Price. But at last, the new computer is finally built. Now that I've gone through the experience of building a PC, primarily for PhotoScan, I've decided to share what I've learned with you to help you get the most out of your hardware, particularly if you're on a budget. And so I present to you PhotoScan Guide Part 3.5, How to Build a PC for PhotoScan. First off, let's look at how PhotoScan utilizes three components, the CPU, the GPU, and RAM. CPU. As in any build, the CPU is one of the most important factors, and a PhotoScan PC is no exception. Simply put, the more cores you have, the better. The CPU is utilized heavily during every step of processing in PhotoScan. I recommend at least a quad core as the bare minimum. Keep in mind that for every GPU you run, AGI Soft recommends disabling one CPU core in PhotoScan. So if you decide to buy two GPUs and you only have four cores to start with, that leaves you with just two. But you can save money by purchasing a cheaper CPU and overclocking it to improve performance. GPU. I consider GPU choice to be as important, if not more important in some ways, than the CPU with regard to PhotoScan. Even though the GPU is only used during one step of the process, building the dense point cloud, that one step usually takes far more time than any other to complete. Since so much time will be spent utilizing the GPU, this is an important choice. However, that doesn't mean you need to go out and buy the most expensive cards. As I mentioned, PhotoScan can utilize more than one GPU in your system. But this isn't like rendering on GPUs. Two identical cards won't cut the working time in half compared to just one card. With every additional GPU you add to the system, you will see diminishing returns. Yeah, it'll be faster, but if you're laying down $1,000 a card for a Titan, is it worth it? Interestingly, you can see identical or improved performance from running two or more cheap cards compared to a single, really expensive card. PugetSystems.com recently tested a variety of different GPU setups in PhotoScan and found that two GTX 960s gave virtually identical results to a single Titan X. That's a pretty significant considering that currently a Titan is about four to five times more expensive than a 960. RAM. While the CPU and the GPU have the biggest influence on speed in PhotoScan, you don't want to discount RAM. More RAM may not speed up your project, but it will determine the amount of work you can do. The biggest consumer of memory is going to be your source photos, the number of them, and their megapixel count. The quality you generate your dense point cloud at will also be a factor. If you shoot fewer than 100 images per scan, you probably don't need to go nuts. You might be just fine with 16 gigs of RAM. But as you crawl into the hundreds or even thousands of source photos, you definitely want to increase the system memory. If you shoot with a very high resolution camera, you will also be putting a lot of demands on the RAM. I suggest a minimum of 32 gigs if you're a casual shooter, and at least 64 gigs if you're a real nutbag. Everything else. Whatever works with your CPU, GPU, and RAM. All right, so I've talked about what I recommend when building a computer, but what did I actually build for myself? Well, here it is. Because this was the first computer I ever put together myself, I decided to base it off someone else's build, just to give me a little more confidence that it would actually work when I turned it on. The PC I based it on was built by Albert Omos, who shared his system specs on Twitter. Thanks, Albert. The CPU is a six core i7 processor at 3.3 gigahertz. The GPU is an EVGA GTX 980 Ti with six gigabytes of memory. Housed in the Asus X99A motherboard is 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Unlike Albert, I haven't overclocked the CPU at all because I'm a scared little schoolboy bitch. And since this was my first PC build, I didn't want to have to deal with the water cooling. However, I do want to make sure my computer stays relatively cool while under load, so I installed a CryoRig H5A mid-tower cooler. I also want to make sure space and airflow would not be an issue, so everything is fitted into the massive Cooler Master Storm Striker case. The total cost of the system was approximately $2,128.38. Of course, no computer is complete without a name, and so I've christened her the Renderhor Mark II. 
She'll take any job. Go ahead, stuff reports. She's ready for a three-way. SLI. Those tight slots are begging to be filled. God, that's filthy. Here's the moment of truth. Testing your old system with your new one. How did it do? Here's the scene I'm using to benchmark PhotoScan. The old computer completed everything in about 83 minutes and 45 seconds. The same scene on the new computer took about 24 minutes, 25 seconds. So there's definitely a big improvement there. I'll be rendering in cycles a lot with this computer as well, so I wanna make sure there's an improvement there too. Using Mike Pan's BMW scene in Blender 2.77a, I got a time of about eight minutes, 24.88 seconds on the old computer. On the new computer, I got about two minutes and 59.16 seconds, which is great. So the new computer definitely is faster, but it took a bit of money to get there. If you can't afford to spend as much as I did, you can use used parts to uh, fill in gaps where you just don't have the budget. For example, Steve of CG Geek recently posted a video where he built a new computer using a combination of old and new hardware. In his build, he was able to get used Xeon processors on eBay for about $65 each. These cost about $1,500 new, so that's saving like 95% of the price because it's used. And they were 8-core CPU Xeon processors. $65. Just remember to be careful when buying used equipment. Does this sound like ASMR? As for my new computer, I expect to see a lot of stuff being done with it this year. A new Happy Wheels video, more GTA videos, and of course more PhotoScan videos. And speaking of PhotoScan, I'm working on a line of high quality textures generated from scan data that I will be sharing with you relatively soon. I'll be putting out a video about them soon, but if you want a sneak peek at some of the textures that will be available, you can visit my ArtStation page to check them out. I'm calling them Classy Scans. They'll be similar to the real displacement textures that Christoph Schindler has been putting out, which I recommend checking out if you haven't already. And there you go. That's my guide to building a PC with PhotoScan in mind. If you have any questions or suggestions of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you're hungry for more info, I highly recommend checking out the two articles on PugetSystems.com. They're fairly comprehensive and focus on the demands placed on both the GPU and CPU in PhotoScan. And because they were written in September of 2015, they're both still pretty relevant. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching, thanks for your patience, and I'll see you in the next video. First off, let's look at three components and how they...